Alex, any public input? Uh, Roger? No? Okay, thank you. For the record, all board members are present. Approval of the minutes January 6, 2020. So moved. Second. Motion to second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Bill payment of January 27, 2020. Voucher number 201-924-80 through 201-92635 uh, with a total amount of $671,628.40. And a motion, please. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor and signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Bills are paid. Department heads, Paul Siegman. I don't have much tonight. Just keep enjoying the winter the way it is. Let's see if it stays that way. Sorry if you're a skier, but they make snow down there. We can keep it this way here. Um, one of the things, and I actually had one of the residents call me and said, we had the article in the Tribune, and it said about no parking and all that. He says, what well, the thing you didn't bring up was people plowing. If you plow your own driveway or you have a service plow it, they're supposed to plow that snow onto your property, not across the street, not onto your neighbor's property. We have issues every year where people plow the snow into the ditch across their street because nobody lives there. The problem is when you get this freezing and thawing, I end up with a dam in the ditch. We don't always catch this right away, and that's when we get rain like this, it starts backing up. So for everybody's information, let your, let, if you have a plow service doing it, let them know because they won't get the ticket. You're the homeowner. You'll probably get the ticket for it, and I believe it's a $500 or $1,000 fine for plowing across the street. Um, besides that, there's a couple things that are coming up on the agenda. If anybody has any questions. Yep. Yep. That's it. <coughs> Richie Donner. Good evening. I got the uh, the one motion on there for tonight for you guys. Uh, the other thing I just want to bring the board up to date with is. The uh, camera trailer that Niagara County purchased for us, the sewer district, uh, we've been working on that uh, the past month or so, and we're almost at completion. Uh, when it is completed, I'll bring it over maybe on a board night or something, or if you guys want to stop and take a look at it. My guys have done a lot of nice work in it. We've got it set up to where I think it's going to be something very useful for the town and uh, should last us for quite a few years, so that's all I have. And the majority of that money came from the county? Uh, Almost all of the money came from the county sewer district right. for the I&I uh, &I remediation work. Right. Um, I think you guys are aware that we receive 20000 every year from the county for things as Rich is doing now with his trailer. And um, I'd like to come over and see it. Anytime. Doors open. Uh, one thing, do you want to give us a brief explanation as to our, so everyone here knows about your motion tonight? Uh, motion tonight is to change our billing software, and Kathy can agree that uh, it's about time we change things over. Uh, we're going with a system that's a little more compatible with what Kathy uses on the rest of uh, her collection software. Also, it's going to enable the town residents to view their account online, also to pay their account online, and it should work out better for everybody. We've had a lot of requests for it. Uh, the old system that we have doesn't quite go for it so much, but uh, this new system will allow us to, to move in to the next way that all the millennials like to pay their bills, just go online, and it will also allow us to electronically bill, hopefully, and doing away with some of the mailing that we get. So will it force them to do a total pay, not a partial pay? No. No, so they could partial pay their water bill? I believe so. Pay and pay anything okay. they want on them. All right, Richie, thank you. Okay. Uh, right, recreation director, Mike Canale. Good evening. Uh, baseball softball registrations ongoing. Uh, second thing, next Saturday, February 8th, will be our fifth annual Winterfest. 12 2 next door at the U Center. We have some outdoor activities planned. We'll happily cancel those if the weather wants to stay mild like it is right now. But uh, we have some horseshoeing lined up. We have animal encounters coming again. That's, that guy's pretty cool. It brings the snakes and the reptiles. Kids really enjoy that. And we'll have some crafts and 
um, some light refreshments. So outside of that, not too much going on. And constables, if you guys, Roger, if you guys wanted to drop in and, I don't know, community outreach, let me know. I set up a table and chairs for you. I'd be happy to hold you guys. Thanks, Mike. Yep. And Mike, while you're there, uh, if anybody's noticed, we're doing some remodeling in the town hall here. We're doing it in-house with town employees. And I want to thank you publicly for sending your people over whenever they sure. have a chance to come over and Absolutely. help us out. So it's moving a little bit slowly, but it is moving. And hopefully by the end of this week, it's... Uh, it's going to look pretty nice, I think. And I think anybody knows that's walked down that hall many times that the hallway has not been remodeled uh, Ever. since this building was built. So it's about time. And once again, thank you for your help. I certainly appreciate it. Thanks. Mike Hawk is in code school this week, and Kelly is not here. Our uh, constable's report. <coughs> Good evening. I have just three points. Um, on the 27th of February, uh, the emergency management uh, um, office has asked us to do a presentation for public outreach uh, in the community center. This will involve uh, the constables describing uh, from a historical basis of what we do, um, what is our benefit to the, the town, and uh, basically what are our future, future goals. So that will be where the public will be able to uh, ask us uh, questions. It will be a question and answer period in order to uh, facilitate any, any questions or anything else that they may have. Uh, second thing is we have two officers, uh, constables, going to the, the National Child Safety uh, Technician course, free of charge. Um, they will, once they come back after a week, they will be certified to install and to uh, uh, repair uh, car seats for the town. Um, hopefully we'll be able to, I'm um, trying to obtain a grant so we can give out car seats for people that can't afford them. Uh, some of the car seats that people have now are uh, outdated and some of them are on the recall list. So if we have an event, we might be able to change out some of the car seats from outdated or expired ones to new ones. So that's in the future. Uh, the second thing, a uh, third thing is house checks. Over the last uh, two months, the number of house checks have uh, increased. Uh, that I account for the um, residents of the town being more um, aware of what we do and how we do it. And we document every time that we go out to check a home. Uh, we don't just check the door, but we walk uh, around the, the, the property. We make sure that there is no uh, damage or any water uh, problems or anything else. So. Uh, we are getting a positive uh, reaction with that, and uh, that is because we're out there, we're visible, we're uh, making contact with the public. So, thank you. Yeah, Roger, one thing you had mentioned this morning at our uh, department head meeting was, uh, and we had talked with our grants writer this morning about the possibility of, of getting the car seats, but also she mentioned in bicycle training some helmets also. Oh, yes. Um, uh, Target has a, a particular grant for uh, law enforcement, and they will provide um, car helmets for children, uh, not adult helmets, but for children. So uh, whenever the emergency management has their uh, bicycle event, we can join in and uh, give away helmets. That would be and a good I thing. I think that's scheduled, isn't it, Roger, that uh, bicycle I going to be believe you said March or March, April. March, I believe, yeah. Right. So that's something, again, is for the, the benefit of the, the residents. Yeah. And uh, getting a free helmet Great. can't beat it. Good job, Roger. Thank you. Arlene Mancy is not here tonight. Wendell, Tim Zuber. <coughs> Thank you. Hi, Tim. Just got a couple things for you this evening. First is our planning board report, and we're actually going <coughs> to 
reach back to the December 18th of 2019 to start off, but uh, there were actually no agenda items for that meeting, so it was canceled. Our next meeting was January 8th, and the first item on that agenda was a sketch plan for a private club by OVEST Development. The applicant proposes to convert the existing structure at 2609 Niagara Falls Boulevard into a private club with a, a gated driveway. This is where the old driving dome, driving range dome building was right next to Oppenheim Park. Um, while no physical changes to the structure are proposed, the, re the project requires site plan approval since it's a change in occupancy. Club membership would be open to anyone with members being able to enjoy the space for meetings, sporting events, and other types of gatherings. They mentioned horseshoe tournaments and dart tournaments and um, uh, gatherings such as that. There will be no alcohol served at the building. It will be bring your own. And there will be no kitchen or food preparation as it will have off-site catering only. The applicant was advised to, uh, of several items to address and include on their formal site plan submittal, including analysis of the structural capacity and safety of the existing bridge over Sawyer Creek, coordination of the gate location with the DOT, and potential floodplain impacts. No action was required or taken. The next item was a sketch plan for Dimension, L Dimension Energy LLC Community Solar Project. The applicant proposes to construct a 4 megawatt DC utility scale solar energy system at 3672 Maple Road, or Mapleton Road, sorry, just west of Shawnee. Uh, uh, as opposed to the different uh, fields that we've talked about in the past, uh, these would actually be fixed face panels and would basically be pointing in the same southerly direction all the time. And they'd cover approximately 14 acres of the 45-acre site. The DC Energy Project would include lithium-ion batteries for power storage, and the parcel is zoned R2, RR, and AR, and is outside of the potential airport potential impact area. Planning Board discussed several concerns with the project, including visual impacts, setbacks, especially from residential, screening, glare, battery components, floodplains, and wetlands, all of which are present on the site. The applicant was advised to review all town code requirements, site plan review checklist, and the comprehensive plan before continuing on with a formal site plan submittal. The applicant was also advised that a drainage easement and access easement would be required for potential future maintenance of the creek that runs through the property. Uh, again, no action was required or taken on that sketch plan. The next item was another sketch plan. It's for wood stream landing, townhouses, and apartments. The applicant proposes to build six 12-unit townhomes and two 8-unit apartment buildings with a dog park and trails on a 9.4-acre parcel of land on the north side of Sawyer Drive. at SBL 161.02. Oh, you can read the number in there. Uh, the parcel is zoned uh, C1 commercial. Um, this lot was actually part of the Woodstream Landing Subdivision, which was originally approved over 25 years ago. At that time, only the three apartment buildings that face onto uh, Plaza were built. Um, the, uh, at that time, uh, also they put in sanitary sewers and water mains that actually go through this proposed parcel to be developed. It's my understanding they were done under the PIP plan and were inspected and approved and dedicated to the town and they're in easements currently. Um, the lot has been sub, uh, separated from the original development and the applicant is proposing basically a more modern layout of townhomes and apartments for the project. The parcel would remain as one parcel with no individual ownership of townhomes. The access road and driveway from Sawyer Drive would be private. The applicant was again advised of several items to include on their formal site plan, including impacts of wetlands, the Burkholds Creek, floodplain and floodway, parking, and the single access point, um, and it's a applicability with fire codes. Uh, no action was required or taken. Our last agenda item on that meeting was a site plan for custom covers and canvas, a building addition. Uh, the board actually uh, reviewed one of these a couple years ago, probably four years ago now. Uh, but they had bought some additional property and they're proposing to construct a 4,500 square foot addition to an existing building at 2394 Niagara Falls Boulevard. Parcel is zoned C1 commercial and is in the Niagara Falls Boulevard overlay. The building would not need water or sanitary services and would just be used for additional storage to support the custom canvas and canvas business. The applicant was advised of items to address on their site plan, uh, including verification of property ownership, fire advisory board review, and submittal of a boundary survey. No action was taken on that. 
Uh, the only other meeting that we had was scheduled was for January 22nd, but that one was also canceled due to lack of uh, any agenda items. So that's the summary of our last three planning board meetings. Are there any questions? Any of those? Fellows, any questions for Tim? Thank you, Tim. Thanks. Uh, well, we do have one more item on our agenda, and it's really uh, in a motion that's in your packet, but we have a proposal in for our uh, 2020 MS4 assistance uh, proposal. This is what we do every year, and it covers our uh, preparation of our annual report that we have to give to the DEC by June 1st. You remember, we usually do a public hearing, give a, a presentation on that in May. So it covers preparation to that report and assisting the stormwater management officer, Lou Anastasi, with any other uh, needs that he has throughout the remainder of the year. So if there's any questions on that, let me know. Thank, thank, thank you, Tim. <coughs> Motions. Matt Brooks. Um, first motion. Motion is the one that uh, Tim referenced uh, from Wendell to authorize Wendell to provide stormwater management program <laughs> assistance for the t year 2020 in accordance with their proposal letter dated January 23, 2020 for a time and expense estimated fee of $6,000. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, next motion uh, from the Highway Department to approve and authorize the attendance of the Highway Department Superintendent Paul Sigmund to attend Advocacy Day in Albany, New York, March 3rd through <coughs> March 4th, 2020, and the respective two <coughs> nights of accommodation and all their costs associated with attendance. I'll second the corrected motion. Gee, you could have an extra night there, Paul. We'll make the motion, just change it to one. We have a motion. Can I have a second, please? Second. 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 All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, next motion uh, from the town board to accept with regret the retirement of Brian Croning as town constable, effective retroactive to January 1st, 2020, and to express the town of Wheatfield's appreciation to Constable Croning for his dedicated service for the past 20 plus years in helping making the town of Wheatfield a better place. So moved. Second. second. A motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <coughs> uh, next motion uh, is from the Firearm Permit Review Board to approve the firearm discharge permits for the individuals shown on the attached list from the uh, Firearm Permit Review Board. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next motion to confirm and establish the restoration of the town attorney position to full time as it was in years previous, retroactive to January 1st, 2020. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We're all choking up here. <laughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> Uh, the next motion, um, I believe in the original motion package that was replaced, so what's in the original motion package, um, I'll replace with this. Um, it's from the town budget director and the highway department. Be it resolved that the town board does hereby approve and authorize the expenditure of up to $200,000 from the highway equipment capital reserve fund to be used as a down payment for the purchase of two new tandem plow trucks subject to a permissive referendum, notice of which <coughs> shall be published in the town's newspaper of record. I'll make the motion. Second. Motion and second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, next motion from the town clerk. Resolution to allow the town clerk to waive the local fee of $17.50 for a marriage license when either of the parties making the application for such certificate is a member of the Armed Forces of the United States on active duty pursuant to New York State Senate Bill S-3756. So moved. Second. Motion is a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Then we had a few more uh, late motions. Uh, first one from Water Sewer Department. <coughs> Be it resolved that the town board does hereby approve and authorize the expenditure of $25,390 for the water sewer department to update its billing and work order software with Edmonds Government Tech or GovTech. Said system updates, updates will benefit residents, allowing them to view their accounts online, allow the option to receive bills electronically, and allow online payments. 
Payment for the system update will be split split between budget lines F8310.0400 and G8110.0400. Second. Just, just a question. Are they going to convert much history with this, Rich, or all your history? Okay. A motion to second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. And, and another late motion um, from the town board. Be it resolved that the town board does hereby approve and authorize the town to replace the town of Wheatfield's current Radwin radio system and to enter into contract with Transwave Communication Systems, Inc. for the amount of $11,235 for services and materials to provide new, a new radio system. Said purchase authorize, authorization waives the town's standard procurement policy as an emergency purpose purchase as the current system has failed and cannot be repaired due to obsolescence and is immediately needed by the town. Okay, Larry, does that include a uh, maintenance agreement? After the install, because you get a, the equipment on a two-year manufacturer warranty. And then and after they install it, there's probably like a 90-day period. That, so after the 90 days are up, we'll have a maintenance agreement that will go into effect. Okay, because we want to make sure we, we want to... I'll make that. the motion, and I'll explain a little after we get a second. Okay. I'll second. But essentially, I'll the last couple of weeks or, or more, maybe, I don't, I don't know, maybe a couple last couple of weeks for sure, <coughs> many of the town departments, remote departments like highway, water, sewer, recreation, the departments that are resident here at the town hall campus, haven't had the issues because they're not communicating over the wireless link. Uh, but the wireless link's over eight years old. Um, it's, it's, uh, it distributes through the tower that we have next to the teen center. The teen center tower, um, it's a shared tower. You know, they probably have Verizon, uh, AT, I mean, there's several cell carriers that are on that tower. And our, our cabling that's been on that tower was compromised and they had to run new cable but the radials that are at the top of the tower, they're eight years old and they're not, you can't even get parts for them anymore. It's like anything with technology. You buy a computer and if you get five years out of a personal computer before Windows 7 goes to Windows 10 goes to Windows whatever, uh, you can get about five years out of a computer product usually. We, got, we were able to get eight years out of this, which uh, ex probably exceeded its life expectancy. Uh, the current radio that we have now that it's, under, it's re been repaired, it's functioning, but you know, you, we don't know how long. It, it's at a speed of about 40 megahertz. The new radial I have a speed of 750 megahertz. We looked at other products to see whether we had to do the wireless. I mean, we have Spectrum Internet here at the Town Hall, and uh, Spectrum, we're paying about $150 a month, $175, $150 a month for what we have for our Internet just in one building. If we had to replicate that for the other three buildings, we'd be looking at about $6,000 a year. So this product is going to go in and hopefully last five to eight years again, and uh, we'll have payback in a couple of years uh, with bandwidth that's a lot faster than what we have today. Okay. Thank you, Larry. We have them. And a maintenance package that will be tacked on. So if we have a problem, Part of the problem we had waiting to get this fixed over the last two weeks is we weren't under maintenance. You know, the manufacturer, you know, they don't have spare parts for this stuff, so it was kind of senseless. They wouldn't, they wouldn't warranty or maintenance our product. So when, when it breaks, Transwaves already has maintenance contracts with other customers. You know, we were like second fiddle. So we had to wait sometimes for their maintenance people to free up from other duties that they already had commitments <coughs> to. So going with a new product, new maintenance program, if we do have an outage in electronics and hardware and computer stuff, I mean, they, they break. I mean, you get a new computer at home and, you know, it, it can break after a couple of months. Um, but then if you got a warranty or a maintenance on it, you can get them repaired. Thank you, Larry. Any questions? We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion carried. That is it for the motions tonight. Thank you. Matt. <coughs> Department heads. Larry, you had your say. I got one Go more. <laughs> <laughs> Two years ago, we put in a new phone system, and I've been <coughs> asking the carrier, Newcastle, we have NAC phones. And when we put the new phone system in, we had uh, 15 phone calls. With our old phone system, you could, we had maybe 40 different or 50 different. Uh, lines and we were paying for each one separately 
and you could do 50 concurrent calls. The new phone system uh, runs on a SIP trunk that you have like 15 shared lines that you can use. And we, we set 15 as a, that's what the vendor initially told us we could get by with about 12. And I made them up to about 15. So they ran a report for the month of Jan December and January to see how many lines we're actually using at once. So if water and sewer are talking to customers and Agnes has a call at highway, town clerk's office is talking to someone and then the supervisors, the most calls <coughs> that we've ever had going all at the same time is seven. So I was kind of happy to hear that. I just wanted to make sure that we weren't getting close to that 15 mark where I would have to bump it up to maybe 20. But so far, 15 is working good uh, with what we have. And uh, the problem is if you ever hit the 15 mark, if the 16th call comes in, they just get dead airspace. It doesn't go through. So I just wanted to relay that a little bit tonight, saying that the current phone system looks like it has real good ample capacity and we shouldn't exceed that I don't, I don't see in the near future and I'm still working on the analog conversion which is a separate thing CenturyLink I, I reached out to all the IT directors in New York State and all the counties and CenturyLink is pulling out of they're a Texas based company they took over from level three and they're they're pulling out of New York State so a lot of the other counties that had CenturyLink they're having to switch over to Spectrum or switch over to Verizon or switch over to some other phone carrier and I'm getting quotes now I mean we were paying a little over three to four hundred dollars a little over three hundred dollars some of the quotes that are coming back now are up to six hundred dollars a month so whatever we get going forward it doesn't look like it's going to be any cheaper than we had but we don't have a choice nothing goes down there no. as we all know but uh, we, uh, we have to do this move before March 20th I think it's the dead Update and I think tomorrow we have a meeting gone with uh, Verizon. Uh, is it tomorrow? I, like I think tomorrow we have a meeting with Verizon. Okay. And, you know, they're they're supposedly going to talk some numbers with us. I got Spectrum giving us some numbers and see where we come out with it. I'll keep the departments informed. Thank you. That's Ray. it. Um, Gil Desant. I don't have anything. Thank you, Gil. Kurt Doctor. I'll keep this nice and short as long as my voice holds out here. Um, our banners went up uh, this month. Um, so if you haven't seen them yet, uh, you can see one that we have right here on Town, town Hall campus uh, right out front on the uh, metal uh, street light stanchion. Um, so take a look if you haven't seen it. Um, I'm really pleased with how they look. Um, I Now people that pass through on Niagara Falls Boulevard, I think they're going to have a hard time passing through and saying, I didn't realize I passed through the field after after seeing those nine banners that we have up on Niagara Falls Boulevard. While you're on the banners, not to interrupt, Kurt, I want to tell you that as people come into the town here, uh, into the town hall to pay taxes and other things, we've received many compliments <coughs> about the banners. Uh, Glad to hear no negative. And so, Rita, uh, Kurt, thank you so much. All all good. And then the only other thing I have for tonight is LED street light conversion. Um, I'm, it, that's still moving. Um, we're haggling through some of the finer details uh, with National Grid, uh, but I do expect that we'll be moving forward here pretty soon, uh, within um, probably the first half of the year. That's it. That's it. Thank you, Kurt. <coughs> Randy? I have nothing. Okay. I've got a couple things. Uh, one that I, I forgot about, but I, I got two inspection reports of the Niagara County SPCA, and one was on the municipal shelter inspection report, and the other was on the dog control officer inspection, and not going into any great length, uh, but there was absolutely no negatives. Everything was positive on both inspections. On the municipal shelter inspection, everything was yes and in compliance. And also on the dog control officer inspection report, again, which was conducted in January 15th, uh, all the positives, no negatives. Uh, so uh, kudos to you and the SPCA, Susan. Thank you very and, much. And um, thank you. It's nice to hear that. And, you know, I love the SPCA yep, and my animals. But uh, nice job. Thank you very much. Also, um, Kurt, I was going to mention to you earlier, but we got in here. Um, the Niagara County has a bike trail. And the bike trail now runs through Pendleton, Lockport, but it dead ends coming into Wheatfield. And Jim Sobchak is, is heading up this uh, this program. 
And, and I, to be honest with you, don't have the time right now. And if you think it's something that your focus group would like to do, I know our grants writer is going to meet with them. They're looking for a way of getting through Wheatfield. The problem is that the railroad track is still being used in Wheatfield and in North Tonawanda. So they're trying to find an alternate route to come through Wheatfield with a bicycle trail. And if you think that's something one of your focus groups may want to be involved with, let me know. I'll give you the information. They have some meetings set up. Um, I, in, in fact, I got a, an email today from Sobchak saying that uh, CSX has allowed them to come into Wheatfield up until where the, the, uh, the track is used. So that would bring them further into Wheatfield, but they're trying to find a path to uh, complete the trail and connect into North Tonawanda. It's not part of the Greenway. It's a separate thing altogether. Uh, but if you think there's anybody who would like to be involved and attend some of the meetings, it would be greatly appreciated. I don't have the time right now. There's so many other things going on. But if you have anybody that may be interested, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, pass it along. And I, I will show it to you when we have a chance, okay? And the other thing is I talked with uh, Susan from the SPCA tonight, and uh, there was a feral cat focus group on October 22nd in Albany. And I was hoping that uh, because of Gil Doucette's expertise in the feral cats that uh, maybe you'd like to attend that uh, seminar in Albany, yes. Okay. But uh, Susan has the information for you, Gil, and uh, I know we would all support you going. Thank you, Gil. Okay. Um, let us see what else we have. The SPCA report, feral cats, white trail, and maintenance. Um, we're um, I wanted to uh, just, uh, let the board know I'd like to request an executive session at the end of the meeting regarding the employment history of a particular individual. Okay. i make a motion to go into executive session. Second. Second. All in favor, signify by 